We just get to nuke him for 10. <laughs> What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to yet another standard gameplay video. Guys, we have got a blast of a deck today. We're going to have a fun time. Uh, before we jump into that, though, got to remind you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Not only is it a great way to support the channel, it's free. You don't have to pay anything. It's just a great way to support. Uh, but on top of that, we have a giveaway going on right now. It just started at the end of last week. We're going to be giving away in like two months. I know it's a long way away, but a draft booster box of Streets of New Capenna. We went ahead and uh, dropped that down just because we had already gotten a few of the spoilers, the Triumph, as, the Triumph Cycle, as well as the Ascendancy card. Uh, and so I figured we'd go ahead and drop it. That way you guys had as much time as possible. You got plenty of time. Go ahead and subscribe. There are other ways to enter. Video on our landing page here on YouTube. Uh, so please do check that out. You can get all the details there, other ways to enter, all that kind of stuff. But let's talk about today's deck, guys. This is going to be a fun one. Like I said, this is a deck of my own creation, uh, 100% um, built around some of my favorite cards, but one in particular, Explosive Singularity, a card that I have not yet played with. I don't think is that good, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. It deals 10 damage, 10 to any target. It can be anything, planeswalker, creature, opponent. The idea is the opponent, we're gonna try and nuke them, but the idea is we can cheapen this up with a lot of tokens. So we've got a lot of ways to do that. We've got burn down the house, fell at our retreat, gonna spit out some things, wedding announcement, gonna spit some things out. The restoration can spit things out. We've got Zareel, we've got wandering emperor, we have got the crucible. We even have den of the bugbear, all of these uh, can spit out basically a ton of tokens that we can use to cheapen this up. Uh, and theoretically attack in now <clears throat> excuse me oh that was that was dangerous uh wedding announcement also on that flip side gonna lord us of course which is great fell at our retreat gonna make them uh a little bit stronger on our side plus give vigilance which we can use to attack in and then on the second main phase use the singularity to hopefully get 10 damage in uh we have a lot of sweepers in the deck between doomscar and burn down the house both of these are very, very good. Uh, a lot of creature control, but the idea is burn down the house does double duty. We can either spit out tokens or we can uh, sweep if we need to. Um, we do have Demon Bolt, Fateful Absence, and Rip Apart for a lot of lucrative removal. We can do this in multiple different ways, hit different things. All of it is to help us get to that end goal of blowing our opponent up for 10 damage. <laughs> um, Guys, we'll see if this works. This is going to be a silly one. Like I said, this is just a little deck idea that I had. I've had some fun in testing it, uh, and it's going to be an interesting, interesting set of games here. So let's go ahead, guys. Let's jump in. We'll see how it does. Uh, again, I don't expect super good things from this, but I do think we'll have a good time. So let's see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Uh, and do we like this hand? It's a little bit slow, but we do have the Doom Scar to save us. And of course, that wedding announcement uh, is long term value. So I think we'll try it. We'll see if this works out. Um, again, a lot of this deck is responsive stuff. You know, as we see in the deck tech, a lot of it's removal heavy and that kind of stuff. So we expect that we're going to have a lot of those kinds of starting hands. Uh, but this actually does have quite a bit of you know, long-term power with the Wandering Emperor, the Wedding Announcement, and of course the Singularity. So we'll see if it works. I have no idea. Um, yeah. We'll go ahead and throw that Doomscar into Fortel mode. Uh, so then this way, if we do need to throw it out, we certainly can. I really doubt we will this turn, yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and Wedding Announcement here. Pretty safe. I don't think they're going to have much. They could remove this, but that's fine. They don't remove the Wedding Announcement. Um, so I'm okay with it. All right. Go ahead and drop that extra red source. And here we just get to freely attack. The great thing about the Wandering Emperor is it's flash speed. So we can actually throw this out whenever we need to. Looks like they might be considering if they should kill this 1-1. One -one, um, which is fine. I don't really... Doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> um, I don't really want them to, of course. But, you know, if they do, it's fine. Fishy. Not fishy. <laughs> Alright. Opponent really considering this one damage. And I get it. One damage is a lot. 
Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's get another little 1-1 one -one here. And it could be that they've got like a Cinder Glasm, maybe? Something along those lines that could sweep all of this, which would certainly be good. Um, or they're just playing a little slow, which is totally fine too. Not a problem. You can play slow if you'd like. So basically they did nothing for a turn, which is great for us. Um, just because it means they have nothing they can do. I'm going to hold off on the uh, the Wandering Emperor, actually. I'm not going to just fire that off until we know for sure we can kind of work our magic with it. Let's go ahead and attack in first. Uh, and this is nice because it is going to draw us an extra card here, no matter what happens. Um, and then we can go ahead and Restoration. I guess they could get rid of the Wedding Announcement, but this should draw us an extra card. This is also going to deck thin us a little bit, and we're playing round Jwari Disruption for the most part. Um, but regardless, hopefully we, we can get something here. Crucially, this Saga on two does basically nothing, by the way. Um, there's very little in our deck, if anything, that this actually can hit, but it's really not what it's here for, so that's fine by me. Uh, guaranteeing the extra land drops here, are that's so good for us because, again, we've got the singularities in hand. So at this point, we're just trying to get extra mana, extra stuff down to control the game for as long as we can, and then hopefully kind of deal with whatever they do. The only thing I'm really terrified of is if they just happen to have a kill, like a one-turn kill style uh, deck, which I'm sure they could, um, given what they're trying to do here. And so that is something we do have to be slightly concerned about. We'll do the best we can, but uh, we we do have to make sure we are um, being very cautious. And it might be that the Wandering Emperor is our saving grace here, because we can instant speed throw it out there after they play a creature, after they do their whole thing, and maybe they're trying to attack in for the win, and we just kind of kill it uh, after they declare the attack. We'll see. Alternatively, they are tapping out here. Uh, and not creating any extra treasures. So this is kind of an interesting place to be uh, that we could, if we'd like. Um, yeah, we're gonna decline. I guess we could have thrown a land down, but it didn't really matter. Um, all right, so let's attack in first. So the question becomes, do we wanna throw this out? Um, part of me thinks yes. The other part of me is like, nah, just hold off. Um, we'll hold off. I'm not positive, you know, I'm really not, but I kind of want to have this available in case they throw like a gold span dragon at us or something like that. We just throw this out, kill it, and theoretically be okay. We also have this coming down. The architect, architect, wow, of restoration is certainly a good card for us. And so I'm kind of excited to see if we can get this down and going. The Vigilance is also really crucial here. Again, it works so well with the Singularity, being able to attack in and then still have the creatures available to tap down and use the Singularity. Just perfect. That's exactly what we want. I do fully expect, given this, uh, that they will have like a Goldspan Dragon at some point here. But it looks like they're playing it very, very slowly, as are we, to be fair. Let's go ahead and throw this down. Um, I am just going to go ahead and attack in first. We could throw this down and plus up, but again, I'm trying to play this kind of safe uh, as best we can, and we'll see what they do. It would be kind of dangerous to do that with the Prismari commands in hand. Like, we know they've got stuff like that. I, I think we're in a position where we just kind of hold off. I'm being very careful in this game and playing it ultra safe. May not be worth it, I don't know, but we're going to try. Okay. Okay get another land uh fully expect they've got a full grip of cards here i mean it is kind of ridiculous we're gonna deal five damage to everything this is kind of perfect so what we can do is throw the wandering emperor out plus up on the architect and save it uh which is super worth it if you ask me um unless they've got a two damage like a burn spell sure okay and they get us there, that's fine. Uh, and that does kill the the Wandering Emperor as well. So might have been a bit of a mistake on my end, but it's fine. Um, let's let's burn down the house and get our own tokens out here. These are pretty strong tokens thanks to that wedding festivity. Um, and now it's just a matter of can we deal enough damage to him quick enough. Um, and that explosive singularity... Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have exactly enough to do it. 
no excuse me we're sparing one so we do have enough to just singularity for the win here we'll see if it actually works that'd be amazing they've got shatter skull smashing so they can just deal with most of these then uh which would certainly take us off the singularity play but if we do just draw a land or something we might be able to get it we'll see we will see it looks like they're gonna take the treasure token so i'm sure they've got something here uh jawari disruption would be a really annoying play against like an explosive singularity win you know what i mean um but we'll see what they're looking to do it looks like they're trying to play something Expressive iteration. Interesting play. Uh, I would have not gone for that, I don't think, this turn. But that's perfectly fine. Okay, so they're going to return one to the hand. That's a great way to deal with it. Um, because it is permanent, but... <laughs> uh, yeah. We just get to nuke him for 10. <laughs> I love that play. That feels so good. All right, guys, that is game one down with a win. Let's move into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And again, we've got a pretty removal heavy uh, hand, albeit this is very much focused on single kind of point and shoot removal, but I'm going to try and keep it. We'll see how this goes. Uh, I would love to see, of course, more lands here. We do need to get double red, of course, too. Uh, and that can be a little tricky. So we'll do the best we can here. Hope for the best. Um, I have high hopes. Uh, that first game was great. We got to we got to singularity somebody out, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, looks like a life gain deck most likely. Um, again, this is where Rip Apart is at such an all time high because they can invest so much mana into this, and then we can just kill it. Um, or alternatively, we can just kill it now. Um, <laughs> both of which are great ideas. Uh, part of me just wants to rip apart. I think, no, excuse me, Fateful Absence on the uh, impatient, Impassioned Orator. Uh, I think what we'll do is actually just pass and be able to instant speed deal with the Orator here. This is perfect. So what this allows is they don't gain life this turn. They also don't have enough mana to deal with this, which is really important. Um, and now, I mean, again, we can kind of just wait. So I think we will. Uh, I'd like to save the Demon Bolts for the Righteous Valkyries, which I expect they have, but it looks like they're short on land, which is also kind of helpful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Demon Bolt. Just slowly killing their sense of pride. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and go for the red here. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, at this point. Um, all right, so the question is now, do we want to go for the Rip Apart here and then leave the fateful absence up for this or do we want to start getting the stenzia uprising or do we just want to go for zareel i think zareel is a batter or a worse play a batter play i'm gonna go for the stenzia uprising actually uh not a very exciting play it, se it seems like i know but this is going to get long-term value over the course of the game whereas they could just kill zareel like anytime they want uh and so i'd much rather not give them that option um and here, yeah, they get an attack in, but it's not the end of the world for us. And um, we're actually going to get an, uh, an attack back, which is quite helpful. Uh, and we could do this in multiple different ways, but I think first things first, we just attack in. Um, and you know, weirdly, I think it's just a pass situation. Um, we're going to be able to start slowly kind of ticking them down here. I fully, again, expect a Righteous Valkyrie at some point, but it looks like they're not gonna play one all right fair enough uh this could be a really interesting game though because we can do a lot to them here kind of excited to see how this one turns out because i think we can potentially get this um so the question is do we want a fateful absence anything this turn i'm gonna say no i'm gonna wait there's another rip apart that's actually really helpful Let's go ahead and rip apart here. Uh, I want to encourage us to continue to get damage in as best we can because, again, I do expect Righteous Valkyrie at some point, and I don't particularly want them to be able to um, get to that 27 mark. That's a very key number that I really want to keep them away from as best we can here. Sure, you got another one. That's totally fine. All right, yeah. 
And so again, where we're getting is to a point where I can just burn down the house and be perfectly fine with the outcome <laughs> uh, because it doesn't really matter on our end. Um, let's do this. We'll get a basic planes here. This is just going to make sure we hit our land drops. Um, we have 11 permanents. I'm going to attack in here. They can block two of these and that's fine. Uh, and then we just get to do this on this. I think that's the right play. They're going to have a big angel coming down, I'm sure. Um, but we have the burn down the house that I think we might be able to kind of take care of it here. We'll, we'll see. Not positive on that at all. Um, they've got another angel. So this, we're just getting to the territory of we just burn down the house and take out their entire board here, including our own, of course. But then they've got basically nothing. Uh, we'll decline because we don't have anything. Uh, I, I mean, I think we just burned down the house. I guess we attack in to be politically correct. You know what I mean? Just in case they decide not to block. Um, but it looks like they're going to, which is perfectly fine. Um, cool. And then we burn down the house, get rid of everything. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then we just get our little one, one back. That's the nice thing about Senzia uprising is you can just burn out everything or sweep the board or do whatever you want and then you still have a little one one left behind um next turn is going to be great too because we'll get the uh, architect of restoration down which will be helpful we can actually get it haste also uh which i like quite a bit uh and i do think that's going to be the play uh gives both of them haste we get an extra little one one getting in a good bit of damage here. And again, we're just trying to basically keep them off of that, in this case, 25 life total. That's fine. That doesn't matter. Um, they can start attacking in on the Zareel because they do have flying and we just don't. Um, but we're, we're creating quite a bit of uh, creature tokens now. So this explosive singularity will be live very quickly. <laughs> uh, and in fact, already is. Um... Let's do this, uh, just so we can attack in with this. All right. Um, yep. It's another hit for four. <laughs> uh, we'll tap two, three, four. Yeah. Get him down to uh, basically nothing. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I'm feeling okay about our position now. All right, yeah, Legion Angel is super good, but uh, it's not going to win them the game here. Uh, and crucially, what we can do is Zareel plus and then play another Zareel and then Zareel plus again. <laughs> Zareel, excuse me. Uh, technically, I need to say things more correctly. But yeah, this should be enough to kind of do what we need it to do. They can block the restoration, the architect of res restoration here with the Legion Angel, which is good, but we should have enough to kind of win this. They're counting up permanents right now and making sure that they don't get us down to 13, which is very important that they do. Um, but yeah, I think we just, yeah, we just take it anyway. Guys, we're two for two. Let's see if we can go for a third game and get that win. This deck is so fun. <laughs> so, so fun. All right, guys, here we are for our third and most likely final game. I am going to keep this a um, little bit tricky, of course, on mana because we need double white and double red, but uh, we'll see if we can get there. The double explosive singularity is pretty bad, too, to be honest, but hey, we'll we'll figure it out as we go. Uh, I'm really enjoying this deck so far, guys. It's been really fun, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to see if we can make this one work. Um, see, the Empire is kind of nice. Uh, it's our second white source and allowing the second red source with the pathway land. Uh, and then, of course, we can just sweep at some point here if we need to. Uh, kind of curious to see when we sweep, though, because I don't think we're going to this upcoming turn. 
Um, wow, there's that as well. So now we can actually just wait and use the Seed of the Empire as a removal spell, uh, which seems pretty good. Uh, if they get a big attack in, certainly next turn we sweep, but we've got the Stenzia Uprising as well at some point, so yeah, this is great. So we're going to get, I think, a pretty good hit in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill this, I think, weirdly. I don't really like them gaining a lot of uh, ins or, um, benefit off of every single enchantment they play, so I feel like this is probably better. There's a rip apart as well. Wow, that's really good. Um, this is so good against these uh, enchantment decks, actually. Um, let's see, what do we want to do here? We've got options, really. I mean, we can just Stenzia Uprising and kind of hold off for a turn. Um, then maybe Doomscar. I think I actually kind of like that. So we'll protect ourselves. We're going to take a hit, of course, but like... We get to kind of protect ourselves a little bit with a token, so we'll just probably end up blocking one thing here, but that's fine. Uh, and then we've got Doomscar on the following turn just to sweep their entire board. Uh, sure, we lose a 1-1, one -one, but we really don't lose that much. And then at the beginning of the next end step, we just get another token. Looks like they've got a borrow time. That deals with this. That's fine. But we actually have the rip apart to deal with this, so that's fine. This is all annoying, but not the end of the world. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's be smart about this. Let's play this first. Um, that's going to give us the planes we need, so let's do that. Let's drop this, and then let's go ahead and hit that borrowed time. It's going to give us our Stenzia Uprising back, so we get our 1-1 back, and now we're basically reset to where we were. Um, and as long as they don't have another borrowed time, we're okay. If they do, it's annoying still not the end of the world we don't just die um and we're kind of getting them down to the point where they just have to play some stuff and we can deal with that later so yeah they deal too they get a little uh uh draw excuse me oh man that's so good um we'll decline so this is such a great place to be we get to kill their wedding announcement um and doom scar <laughs> uh it basically reset everything and they've only got three cards in hand granted we've only got two and they're unplayable but um we definitely get a big hit here this is coming down as well which is phenomenal um i'm gonna go ahead and foretell this set up for the next doom scar and uh yeah feeling pretty good here um wow they just gave up <laughs> yes <laughs> Guys, that's an undefeated run with this absolutely silly singularity list. My goodness, let's talk about this deck. All right, guys, so as a reminder, this was just kind of an on the whim silly deck idea that I had based around explosive singularity and some of my favorite token generators because I do think they work so well in tandem together and we got an undefeated run with it. I mean, that I couldn't have asked for anything better. Obviously, um, certain play patterns we could have made different decisions on, whether that would have worked out better or not, I don't know. We did still get all the wins though, so I have to imagine this feels pretty good. Um, the fact that we have so much removal, and again, I've talked about this before because we have played token decks similar to this prior to this, uh, this, this uh, specific build, but the fact that you can add so much sweeper removal into a deck uh, that is really built around creature tokens is kind of an insane combination because it doesn't matter that your stuff dies. You're able to deal with basically anything the opponent throws at you. This deck in particular, having the rip apart access gives you the access to deal with artifacts and enchantments. Obviously the burn down the house as well as the, uh, the fateful absence deals with so much as well in terms of creatures and um, the, the planeswalker side of it. You just have so much you can do, uh, and it just doesn't matter what you kill on your own side. So I I don't know. This feels really good, guys. I'm going to offer this one up. Go ahead. Try it out. See if you could tool it out. If you've got a new version of this list, send it to me because I really would be interested to see what you guys can do with this one. But man, I love this. I thought this was a blast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, guys. Do not forget to enter that giveaway. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. I love you all very much. Thank you so much for the ongoing support from all of you. And I will see you again tomorrow for some more gameplay video. Thanks, guys.